today as we are celebrating, um, you know, we're going to be celebrating New Year's Eve later and we're going to be having a lot of parties again and uh, I'm sure you've enjoyed your Noche Buena last, uh, last Christmas Eve and perhaps some of you, um, especially those who are watching live stream, you're enjoying your vacation now. Some of you, you're attending service while you are there on the beach of uh, Boracay, White Sand and the breeze is there with you and so god bless you you know we know that you're suffering there and so um we want you to enjoy as well okay this service but this new year season this christmas Eve, this holiday season a lot of us were really expecting this and anticipating this so that we can have time with family have reunions but even so um have a longer time of rest and well deserved at that because of the things that have, have transpired in the past year but uh, most of us also use this time to prepare for what's ahead for next year. A lot of us think of goals. A lot of us think of priorities that we will make um, next year. And um, I'm sure you have health goals, you have relationship goals, you have job goals, financial goals. But we hope that you also have, you know, uh, spiritual goals, right? We hope that um, see Rich has um, very uh, relational goals next year. We hope it becomes a success, bro. We're going to pray with the whole church. We'll be praying with you, bro. But even for our, you know, relationship with God, I hope that we would aspire to grow. Any one of you here, you're aspiring to grow in your relationship with God next year. All right. That's our prayer. That's our desire for every single one of us that we will grow in our relationship with God. That is why we're having a new series, a five-week series at that, starting this week. And this will cover the whole of January and the series is called Knowing God. Now, why is it important for us to understand or to know who our God is? Now, to know about His attributes, His qualities is important because generally speaking, the quality of your relationship with someone is dictated by your knowledge of the person's qualities. For example, if you, um, you, know, used to, you, you have this impression or you've heard a lot of... Um, comments or feedbacks about this person as someone who is stingy, someone who is um, always obnoxious, someone who is proud, arrogant, I am sure you would distance yourself away from that kind of person, right? But then there are some people that you've heard that stories that they're very kind, that they're very encouraging, especially very generous. And so those kinds of people you want to associate with and you want to build relationship with. Now, when you talk to them and you actually find out that they are really um, as, uh, as advertised, as said by some of your other friends, and even more, the more you grow into the relationship, the more you grow the friendship, the more you grow the relationship. Perhaps that is, uh, you know, the love story of um, some of you here. Perhaps some of you started with just a hearsay that your, that that person, your crush before, Okay, was um, like this and that, and you're admiring that person because of all this news about her. And so you started to court and you started to get to know, and then you found out that there's really more to what they're saying, and you fell in love with that person, and now that person is your spouse. See, that's what we're hoping to happen, um, not just with the relationships okay, that you have, but with your relationship with God. Our prayer is that this series will help us understand who God is more and more. As we begin next year, you know, we hope that before we do anything next year, one of the primary things that will be established in our hearts is a firm understanding or a reminder of sorts of who our God is so that we will love God, not just every Sunday, but every day of 2017. Our goal in our prayer is that we would all grow in our relationship with God as we get to know who He is. Now, the good news is we can actually do so because we have a God who desires for Him to be known by His people. We have a God who desires for you to get to know Him. In fact, God has given us the Bible, this Bible, as, you know, a, as is His biography of sorts, if you may. This Bible gives us qualities and attributes of who our God is so that we can get to know Him and His ways. For the sake of this series, we'll be looking at the book of Psalms. This will be a reference, and in particular, we will be looking at five songs or psalms that were written by King David. King David is one of the main contributors, contributors of um, Psalms, the book of Psalms, and we're going to be looking at five of his contributions, 
his um, songs that pertain to who God is and what he has done in his life. And hopefully, as we glean from his words, we too would have a better understanding of who God is so that we can know him better, so that we can relate with him better. And so um, this will be our text for the whole of the series. Today we're going to be looking at the glory and the majesty of God as said in Psalm chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles with you, please do open it to Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8, we'll be reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 9. And if you have your Bibles with you and open it, I, I hope that you brought your Bibles. Can you please um, stand up? In reverence to the reading of God's Word. If you don't have your Bibles with you today, um, we're going to flash it here in the screen as well so that you can follow after us. This is the word of the Lord. In verse 1, our Lord, our Lord, O oh, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies, babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes. You still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and all the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Verse 9, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord, and let's pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, and thank you for your word, O God. Thank you for inspiring King David to write this song so that we too can have an, a picture of what he saw in you. Father, I pray that you would open up our eyes as well that we would see who you are. God, Lord, we thank you that you are a God who desires for you to be known to your people. You desire to relate with us. You desire for us to grow in a relationship with you. Today, I, I pray, Lord, that you would help us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak not just to our, our, our minds today, but even to our hearts as we look into who you are, oh God. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may, you may be seated. Now, the scripture that we've read, um, it's one of those psalms that are quite often seen or heard. And it's a very popular psalm. And in fact, what is interesting about this psalm is that it started with this, with this phrase or this statement. And then it ends also with the same statement. It says there, O Lord, our Lord. Can you say, our Lord. Our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And then in verse 9, it says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. It's as if it's saying this whole song, this whole poem or song is all about the, ma the majesty of our God. In fact, I want to highlight those, that word majestic because this is what it's all about. To say that this is about God's majesty, to ma the word majesty or majestic means it's about His honor. It's about His excellency. It's about His glory. In other translations, it says there it's about the glory or how glorious is your name in all the earth. What does it mean to be, glo to, to be glorious? See, the word glory came from the word, um, Hebrew word kabod, which means weight or heavy. See, nowadays, when you say you're heavy, it's not a compliment, right? Um, it's not a compliment if when you say to someone that you're heavy. But you know, in their time, when you say you are heavy, it means you are valuable to me. Your weight to my heart is so much. That's why. You know, that's what it means when you say glory. In fact, the word glory or heavy or weightiness is also synonymous to the word worth or worth-ship, where we got the word worship. And so it is important for us to understand the glory of God so that we can properly 
relate with Him. Now the question is, how is the glory of God revealed? Good news is, we can find that in the, all the scriptures, all the verses in between verse 1 and verse 9 of Psalm chapter 8. First thing that we can, I want to share with you three things, and the first one of which is, God's glory according to David in Psalm chapter 8 is revealed in creation. Can you say revealed in creation? God's glory, God's majesty is actually revealed in creation. In verse 1, again, it says there, you have set your glory, your majesty, your weightiness above the heavens. If people want to know and find out how glorious and majestic our God is, just look to the skies. Look at the heavens. Look at all creation. That is a thumbprint. That is the fingerprint of God about His glory. If you want to know how powerful our God is, look at His creation. See, what's interesting about this um, story is when David wrote it, they say that he was still a shepherd boy at this time when he wrote this song. Probably he was tending his sheep, and at night as he was laying down with his sheep, he saw an open sky and he saw the stars. And at that moment, as he was counting all these white specks on this black sky, he just exclaimed, wow, Lord, there's so many stars. How glorious, how majestic is your name. In all the earth. These stars proclaim your glory. See, he did that with his natural eyes. You know, today in our age, we have the privilege of technology. And now somehow we can see far better than how David saw the stars. In fact, you want to see some of the stars according to NASA. See, we have the Hubble telescope now. And here are some of the... Um, Okay, let me skip this one. This one, oops, sorry. Let me get backtrack. There. Can you see that? For David, it was just black and white. <laughs> but now with the Hubble, wow, you can see this gases all over the galaxies and all those different colors of stars and different sizes of stars. But you know what's even more interesting is that nowadays we know that those specks, some of them are stars, yes, but some of them also are distant, distant, very distant galaxies like this one. This is one of those specks that we see now, but it actually is a galaxy in itself. This is called the, if I'm not mistaken, the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is far bigger than our Milky Way Galaxy. The Milky Way Galaxy has about billions of stars. This one has even more than that. Can you see? How immense, how glorious, how powerful our God is. What's even amazing is that they found out that when a star explodes, it doesn't end there. It creates a wow, a, a canvas of amazing pictures, and this is one of them. This is called the Crab Nebula. Out of, a, out of the uh, I guess the remnant of an exploding star, of a star that exploded, created this, wow, magnificent, magnificent celestial body. Wow, amazing. Another one is the butterfly nebula. Can you see that? Parang nag explode parin siya, no? Parang. But it's amazing. This one is the, I think, eagles, the eagle nebula. Can you see the beauty of these things? Can you imagine how God, the God that we serve, is actually all, all powerful? When I see these pictures, when I look at all the other pictures available out there, wow, I cannot but just worship God. I cannot but be just amazed at the power, the majesty, and the glory of God. Of God and that's actually what happens to every single one of us if you have a revelation of God's glory that's where true worship springs from the reason why we lift up our hands to God is because we realize he is God and all trustworthy and we are lifting our hearts and our lives to him the reason why we sing and praise his name is because we know he is worthy because when we understand His glory, that's where true worship 
begins. No matter what is going through our lives, no matter what's going through inside of us or around us, when we look up and see His glory, that's when true worship begins. Because our worship to God is a response to our revelation of His glory. If you want to be a, a worshiping kind of person, I want to challenge you. Pray to God for Him to reveal more of His glory to you. See what happens to the kind of worship life that you will have after that. See, that is our prayer, that all of us would have a greater understanding of who God is so that we can worship Him better. See, what's even more amazing or what is worthy of praise and adoration is not just that He was able to create all of these things. And mind you, He did it not by lifting a finger. Genesis 1.26 says, He just spoke it and it came to being. Amazing, powerful God. But here, David had another revelation. In verse 3, it says, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you actually care for him. David, in a moment of worship to God because he saw this majestic heavenly disguise, started to think, Lord, if you are this immense why do you have a heart for people why do you look at us who are frail sinners and unfaithful and you still are mindful and caring of us see God's glory is revealed in his creation but God's glory is revealed also not because he is supernatural but he is also personal that is the God that we serve if you can remember some of the lowest points in your time, maybe this year, some of the most challenging seasons that you've endured this year, if you can still remember those things, if you would have an ability to just look at what's happening in the uni universe at that time, most likely there was another nebula that is being created. Most likely, there's another star that is being born at that time. As majestic as those two events are, this God that we serve, according to David, still takes time to look at what, ha what is happening in your life. He is still mindful of you. You know what the word mindful means? How many of you know what the word mindful means? What is mindful? It means his mind is full of you. That's true. The Bible says if you would count the number of thoughts that God has for you, it would outnumber the grains of sand in all of the seas. That's how much God is concerned about you. That's how much God cares for you. And so I pray that whenever we are faced with challenges, or if we are facing some challenges right now, can I just invite you to just look to God? Look to his creation. Because you know what? It speaks forth. That yes, as majestic as they are, God is still concerned about you. God is mindful of you. He cares for you. And you know what? He is with you. And probably is moving heaven and earth just for you. See, that's how God's glory is revealed in his creation. Not only in creation, but also in mankind. In verse, um, verse 5, it says, Yet you have made him with a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. David was re reflecting about himself and he was saying, Wow, Lord, we have this privilege of being created a little lower than the heavenly beings, a little lower than you. Because as Genesis 1, 26 says, every single person was created in the image of God, can you look at the person seated right next to you? That person is created in the image of God. How many of you agree? Lift up your hand. Yeah. yeah. See, that is why, okay, 
every single person is valuable because every person is created in the image of God. The psalmist said in Psalm 139 that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is so excited when you were about to be born, when you were still in your mother's womb, that He planned every detail of your physical body. I like how uh, one story of a, a pastor, his name is Pastor, uh, pastor Richard Wormband, and he wrote this book called Tortured for Christ. And one of the stories that I love about that book is the story of two Russian atheists. In this couple, um, actually, there's a, there's a, they, they are a man and a wife. And so they are famous in Russia for being good artists. They are good in sculpting. And so he said one time that this couple were trying to finish up a structure or a, 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 a work of art about uh, Stalin, the wife started to talk to the husband. You know, have you ever wondered why we're able to do all of these things? She looked at her hand and, see, and, and realized, can you imagine if we don't have a thumb? We won't be able to hold this mallet. We won't be able to hold this chisel. We won't be able to do all of these magnificent works of art if we don't have a thumb. And so this, this guy said, you know, what, what are you thinking about? What are you talking about? You know, we are a product of chance. We were taught we were, since we were kids that, you know, there is no God, there's no creator. We were products of chance. But then he, she realized, but how can this be a product of chance? It's perfect. Could it be that we are not a product of chance, but could it be that we are a product of an intelligent designer and creator? See, just by looking at the thumb, this couple who profess to be atheists realize that there is God. In fact, the conclusion of their discourse at that time, there is a God. I mean, I wish I have time to explain to you God's glorious design in our bodies, but we don't have time for that. But the point is, God's design in every human being is also a display, a revelation of the glory, the majesty, the power of God. Now, finally, God's glory is also revealed in Christ. Now, this psalm, uh, theologians would, have, would say that this, yes, applies to David and all of us, but yet this is also a prophecy that pertains to Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 2 um, explains it and shows it to us. It says there in the Amplified Version, but one has solemnly testified somewhere in Scripture saying, what is man that you're mindful of him? Or the son of man that you're graciously, or that you graciously care for him? You have made him for a little while lower in status than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands putting everything in subjection under his feet. You have put all things in subjection under his feet, confirming his supremacy. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not see everything in subjection to him, but we see, we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while by taking on the limitations of humanity crowned with glory and honor because of his suffering of death so that by the grace of God extended to sinners he might experience death for the sins of everyone see this author of Hebrews is saying Jesus is the fulfillment of Psalm 8 Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of Psalm 8. That God's glory, yes, is demonstrated or displayed in His creation. It is displayed in mankind, but God's glory is also revealed on who Christ is and what He has done on the cross 2,000 years ago. If all of creation is a display of God's power, if humankind is a display of God's wisdom and intelligent design see God's glory was also revealed when instead of spreading his arms like this 
and crafting human beings like us 2,000 years ago, this God who, as Psalm 33 says, this God who was a star breather stretched out his hands so that he can bear the sins of mankind. That's how glorious our God is. And if it's something, if there's nothing that we have for us to worship Him, again, just look at the skies. Look at who you are and what God has designed you to be. Most of all, look at what Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago for your sake, for my sake, stretching out His arms so that our sins can be forgiven. See, our prayer is that this 2017, we would become a people of faith. That we would become a people full of hope. That we would become a people who would expect great things from God because really, God has prepared great, beautiful promises and gifts, as Brando said earlier, for you and me. Our prayer is that as we look at the cross of Christ, we would remember this is possible. This is possible. All because of what Jesus did. Amen? Can we close our eyes and bow our heads? In fact, can we ask everyone to please stand up? allow the Holy Spirit right now to just speak hallelujah hallelujah you know I sense that some of us here again 2016 may have been tough some of us we've had some of the more difficult health issues that we or our family has endured this year. Perhaps it was a financial difficulty or a relational problem or whatever it is. I believe that right now, God is lifting up your chin. God is lifting up your head and He's saying to you, my son, my daughter, look to me. Know me. Know me. Because I am good, I am faithful, I am powerful, and I love you, and I know you. Not a single moment that goes by in your life escapes my eyes. Father, I pray that you would bring comfort, that you would bring healing. I pray that you would bring restoration of faith to my brothers and sisters, Lord God. And I pray... Lord, that you would allow us, Lord God, to declare your goodness, to declare and claim, oh God, your power, your glory and majesty, Lord God, this coming year. Father, thank you that in all of the things that happened this 2016, Lord, we are grateful because all things indeed work together for the good of those who love you. We may not, we may not be seeing it yet, but Lord, we know all things, all things, Work together for the good of those who love you. Can I ask everyone to please lift up your hands as a sign of surrender? See, the psalmist says, O Lord, our Lord. It was personal for David. It was personal for him to declare that God is Lord. And after his revelation of God's glory expressed in the heavens, his, his prayer was, Lord, you are my Lord. And so as you're lifting up your hands, we're, we want to declare that God is our Lord, even for next year. God, Lord, we lift up our hands to you. Lord, we declare, we pray, Lord, and we say, Lord God, that your kingdom come and your will be done, oh God, in our lives next year. As we look at your glory, as we behold your glory, oh God, expressing all creation in us and even through what Jesus Christ has done, Father, we believe, O oh God, that you have what is best for us, O oh God, that greater is 2017, Lord God, than 2016, O oh God. 
that we can look at 2017, Lord God, with eyes of faith, Lord God, with full confidence that we have a God who is not just for us, but a God who is with us all the way. And so, Father, we pray, let your presence be felt, Lord God, in us, Lord God, and even in our families, Lord God, in our workplace. Lord, may we pray, Lord God, let your will be done, O God. Let your perfect will be done, Lord, in us this coming year. And this is our declaration and our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen.